This episode of Behind the Video is brought to you by the Independent Media Network. The Independent Media Network helps journalists and content creators create their own jobs by building sustainable online businesses. If you're an unemployed or underemployed journalist or content creator, visit imnct.com for more information. Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin. We are back for Behind the Video. This is episode number 70. We've been doing this a long time and, and uh, doing this with me for a long time is uh, Tim Street, who started growing his beard 70 episodes ago, and look at it now. It is like, it, it is just I feel lush old. and beautiful. I feel very old. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you just do this I'm a lot? So, uh, yes, I do. I walk around town all day just stroking my beard. <laughs> Must be neat to, to have something that can grow like that. Mine never. never... <laughs> <laughs> There's our guest. We have a guest, Lon. Amber we J. Do... Lawson. <laughs> we do. Amber J. is here. Amber J. is the CEO and co founder of Comedy Gives Back. It is uh, happening on November 6th of uh, this year. So it's coming up in about two or three weeks. And Amber, why don't you tell us a little bit about what, uh, what it is that uh, Comedy Gives Back does and what it benefits and why should people watch? Uh... Cool. Thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, Comedy Gives Back is a social benefit enterprise, and our tentpole event is a 24-hour global live stream comedy event uh, that leverages traditional talent and digital talent and their audiences. Um, to raise money for good, for a specific charity. And this year, our charity is uh, Malaria No More, uh, which was founded by Ray Chambers and, um, oh my gosh, Peter Chernin. <laughs> uh, and so our 24-hour our global event is November 6th. It's coming up very quickly. It starts at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then what happens is it's a digital telethon. So we have different groups of people coming in. Um, it's all hosted out of what's trending in Hollywood. So Shira Lazar um, and Damon Berger have opened up their studios and their uh, bandwidth and their talent and their um, have become great partners of ours uh, to host the entire 24-hour live stream from their studios. And um, the whole thing can be viewed on Daily Motion. So Daily Motion is our distribution partner, and then we have all sorts of partners who are embedding the live stream as well. So the idea is that we take over all the interwebs for 24 hours, and um, everybody embeds the live stream and is driving tune in. So, you know, we have all sorts of partners from Variety, besides Daily Motion being our host, um, Variety, IFC, Earwolf, Comedy Bang Bang, Sideshow Network, uh, My Damn Channel, you name it, they are uh, partnering with us and using their unique talents to drive tune in and raise donations from Malaria No More. Wow, and this, this looks like it's a lot of work to plan throughout the year. So this is just not something that happens in November and you're done with it, right? This is something that you really need to, to, to work to build throughout the course of the year. How much time does it take to put all this together? And, and what kind of things do you have to think about in order to make all this work uh, for, for 24 hours straight? Well, the, the great news is, is I have two fabulous partners and co-founders. Uh, Zoe Friedman and Jody Lieberman. And Zoe Friedman, uh, you may know her. Her dad founded the um, Improv, the first comedy club in America, and uh, it's celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. They're, they're uh, filming a special on Epics. There's a big documentary coming out. They really are the, the kind of godfathers of comedy, you know, of stand-up comedy. So she, I mean, she um, broke the careers of people like Dane Cook and Eddie Izzard and uh, David Letterman. So she was the booker at David Letterman and then she went over to Comedy Central and so she launched the careers in some of the most iconic television shows from Comedy Central over the years. And then Jody Lieberman was at um, the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival for 10 plus years and broke careers internationally and did international uh, programming. So kind of the three of us coming together using our talents and me being the digital person, you know, having run content at AOL and Babblegum 
and Mania TV. Uh, we used all of our kind of collective talents for good. And so one books a lot. We all use our efforts together, but I'm the one who does the digital, the business. Jody does the production, and um, Zoe does the booking of the talents and content. And so together, we're able to do this. Now, the, the overall vision is we have this tentpole event once a year, but then we will have uh, additional events throughout the year. So we're looking at one for South by Southwest and one for Just for Laughs and so on and so forth. So it will be ongoing, but this will be our tentpole around the world in 24 hours, uh, rally the troops, and, and the goal being that we raise the vibration of the planet through laughter, leveraging the interwebs and um, everybody and their audiences around the globe. And so uh, Amber, do you, do you, sorry, go ahead, go ahead Tim. Uh, Amber J, when when you're putting this together, are you also doing digital deals uh, for the footage afterwards, or is is it just right now focusing on the live event? Uh, actually, that's part of our deal with Daily Motion. So we're trying out um, in this iteration that we'll do the 24-hour live stream, and then the five stand-up shows will be um, pay-per-view 48 hours after the live stream. So if you look at it, the live stream happens, really, if we're talking in Pacific, Pacific time, from 7, to 7 a.m. to 2 p.m., and then we go to London to a live stand-up show in London. And then that piece will be taken out, and you'll be able to purchase that after the fact. And that's another way we're raising money for Malaria No More. Then we come back to what's trending for an hour. Then we go to New York, which is the opening night of New York Comedy Festival at Gotham Comedy Club. And we have the New York stand-up show, um, which has like Maria Bamford on it and um, Reggie Watts and Jim Brewer. And then we come back to what's trending for another hour. And then we go to the improv, the Hollywood improv, where we are the rest of the night. And we'll probably do a podcast to kick off the night. And then we go into the 8 o'clock show, which is Mark Marin, Dane Cook, um, so many more, Jeff Ross. It goes on and on. And then we go to the 10 o'clock show, which is the Comedy Juice show. And that's Garfunkel and Oates and Eliza Schlesinger. Um, and then we go to the Sideshow Network is doing their podcast. And then we're in Australia. Wow. <laughs> so and the, so each of those um, stand-up shows will be um, taken out of the 24-hour live stream and then put in a pay-per-view window on Daily Motion to continue raising money for uh, malaria no more. Do you, do you sleep during this? <laughs> I don't know what. I, I, we have not figured out how we're to sleep. <laughs> There's a lot of logistics here. To go to sleep, you know, because we want to run everything. We do have a production team working, but I know. I don't know. We haven't figured that part out yet. And can you speak to, because you, you're choosing Daily Motion as your, as, your, as your streaming partner. And Daily Motion, is, is it a French company? Is that, is that right? Yeah, they are a French company. And they're the number two, I believe, um, Ha most trafficked did, did, uh, video site out there, which I think is an underplayed uh, known fact that they're, I think they do 20 million in the U.S., but 120 million globally uniques a month. Mm. And so they are a force to be reckoned with internationally. And I think they're making a real push um, in the U.S. to have a bigger presence. Because they've been around... Talk for a long, oh, long have. time. Right. And yeah. Tim and I, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about YouTube, and we really haven't, you know, talked about Daily Motion all that much, which was it. That's why I found it interesting that you chose them as, as the streaming partner for the event. Um, but again, I think, you know, we often get a little too centric in, in one continent sometimes and forget that there's a lot of other uh, pretty big players out there. And well, I'll, you know, I'll tell you the differentiator for us was... Um, because we we entertained a lot of different platforms, and um, this year, why we chose Daily Motion is they were giving us the support not only in the live stream but the pay per view after the fact, which I mm. think is a unique offering, as well as promotion and a sales force. 
Oh, so, really? so, you know, so more than just the streaming services, they're, they're, so they're selling um, ads that will benefit the, uh, the, the malaria group there, or how, how does that work? Correct, exactly. So we have a revenue share across ads, um, and then, of course, they're, they're promoting, which is the key piece of all this, right? We could have this amazing event with all of these people who are donating their time, all these celebrity online and traditional talents who are who are activating their audiences, but if nobody shows up, if Daily Motion, see there's our ad right there. Yeah, right, right front and center. You know, if if we were on another platform and they weren't, you know, kind of putting us front and center, I don't know if people would know about it mm. and you know would miss this opportunity. So the promotion was definitely a key factor in in um, us deciding to go with Daily Motion, and I have to tell you, they have been a dream to work with. They are very attentive uh, and are going above and beyond really our expectations. They've been really great That's partners. Great. You know, I, I googled um, Comedy Gives Back and saw a link to Daily Motion and went to the Daily Motion site. And I'm on Daily Motion. I'm looking around, and all of a sudden the ad pops up. For comedy gives back, and I'm like, okay, wait a second. Did Amber J do a buy? What's and I, like I had to piece it to get. Oh wait, daily. Okay, 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 okay. And I like, and I was like, wow, that's pretty impressive. This is really cool to see it. I'd be surprised yeah, by it. To, so they have how they're set up, and and it's very interesting for web series creators because I I I do believe you can set up, you can become a partner at. Daily Motion, and you can sell your content, and that's kind of their whole platform that they are um, that they're moving towards. Is this uh, you can kind of activate what you what you want, the price point you want, the things you want to sell, and drive your audience. So our URL is dailymotion.com/slash/comedygivesback, and that's where all of our videos live. Not unlike a YouTube page. But the difference is, is you can you can monetize them. You can put a, a price on them. That's interesting. I I have to check that out. You know that, that actually brings up one of our stories this week, and that's that Chill laid off uh, around twelve to fifteen employees, which was virtually most of their staff. Um, and uh, that was kind of shocking news because at VidCon they had just announced that they were doing a movie, which was going to be a pay per view movie using chill and so now it looks like uh, they're gonna have to take that movie with Hannah Hart and uh, Daily Grace and figure out uh, where to sell it that could be a place to I had not heard that and that's shocking news yeah yeah pretty shocking news it's very interesting so and Amber J what else do you, now you do some other stuff too so you, you work with uh, a story tech as a, as a managing partner of uh, and it's a brand technology consultancy so so what, what else do you do out there in this video world and what, what are you seeing that people should should be aware of you know daily motion is something that we really haven't given enough time to so there's a great insight there Any, anything else that people should be thinking about especially I guess you know for people that are trying to build something that you know maybe there's some other ways to get some attention in, in non-traditional ways what, what are you seeing out there well, it's interesting. So uh, one of the biggest kind of temple events for StoryTech is we have a, a partnership with CES, and we announce the 2014 trends at our conference, which kicks off um, Tuesday morning of CES. So we do a half-day conference where we do either um, uh, presentations, one-on-one -on -one interviews, or panels uh, taking deep dives into the five trends that we're focusing on for 2014. So I think, A, that's a great way to kind of, if you are uh, a company who wants to be on the a cutting edge of technology, A, you need to know what, what's happening. And what differentiates story tech as um, a, a product offering is we then couple the conference with a contextually relevant tour of the CES showroom floor. So um, you as a business can not only, okay, so you're like, oh, look, here's the new shiny, cool thing that's happening this year at <laughs> CES, but why, why does that matter to my business? How do I integrate it into my business? I think that's been kind of the missing link. 
specifically for me as a content creator, I've been going to CES for a hundred years. Okay, maybe maybe the past five to seven years I've been going. That's not and you definitely don't sleep, that's... and you don't sleep while you're there for sure, right? No, not at all. <laughs> but, but the difference is, it's like I went to CES and uh, I didn't know where to start. So like, you know, I would go to conferences. That's what I know. I'd walk on the floor and it would be intimidating. And then I would go to parties, which was fabulous. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but it wasn't it wasn't great for learning new technology and being able to integrate it into the business. And I think that's you know our partnership with CES. Storytech and CES, the goal is, is that folks like us, content creators, um, taking them into the technology and figuring out how it works in your business, how it enhances your business to expand and leverage these technologies, and connect with those people to actually do the business. <laughs> you know what I right, mean? Right. So it's not an idea, but it's actually actionable. And let me ask you a question related to that because I, I, you know, the reason why I got all this junk behind me is I've been doing these little gadget reviews as a hobby and now it's like starting to pay the bills a little bit. And uh, I'm getting well, contacted now by a lot of brands to, to review their products. And, you know, there's no expectation of a good review and that kind of thing. But, you know, are you recommending that they go and find some of, even channels that don't get a lot of traffic to put this stuff up just because it's so searchable? Is that something that you're recommending? Um, that they... I'm sorry. So, so yeah, so a great example is um, a major brand contacted me and said, hey, would you, you know, we want you to start reviewing our, our, do da our gadgets for, you know, your, your YouTube channel. I was kind of surprised to be reached out to by that company just because I'm, I'm so, I'm not huge, you know, <laughs> I'm not a big, I'm not a big reviewer, but there's, oh, there seems to be a on, lot of, on. You're totally well, I'll get there eventually, right? But, but there's, but there seems to be a lot of, a lot of large companies finding very small publishers to, to, to do these kinds of product reviews and that kind of thing. Is that, you know, is, is there a, a trend with this? Is this something you recommend that they yeah. do? Like, you know, what, what, what are you seeing out there? Cause this seems very, it's very empowering, at least to the little guys like us that, um, that you can go out as a big brand, uh, get recognized by big brands to do this kind of thing. I mean, where do you see that going? Is this, is this a... Well, Lon, I mean, to your point, you have a rabid fan base who uh, you have curated uh, a specific experience. <laughs> Did we uh, use your house on fire? You can, you can take <laughs> oh, a break. <laughs> um, that that your audience trusts you and they trust your point of view and if you're going to tee up a specific um, offering that they'll be more apt to purchase it and as a brand uh, I'm gonna go as opposed to going wide with it why not go to the specific sorry specific okay. place where people actually are listening to someone who then will will take it in and go purchase Right, they convert right. from just uh, um, awareness to uh, actually buying the product, and and that's huge for them. So uh, it's more, it's just a more effective use of their dollars to come see you, and right. good on you. You know, and that's exactly what you know. Web series, uh, the opportunity. I, I I can't pound that drum more. You know, build your audience that's leverageable because what it does is it converts to dollars. Brands start coming to you because of who, your audience. And that's a perfect example of how valuable it is. Let people come to you. Build right. that audience, build that fan base, and, and, um, and receive the bountiful blessings. <laughs> <laughs> that, that provides. So, so Amber J, um, when you're putting together these tours, how does somebody uh, participate in this? Where do they go to sign up? And what should they expect? Is this going to eat up a, a day, a couple of hours, two days? What, what, what's, what, who's it for, too? Totally. So you can go to story-tech.com and get more information about the tours, as well as going to CES, and you have to register before they give you access to the tours, but if you go to conferences or tours, where the um, impact, Storytech impact uh, conference and tours, and it's really for uh, storytellers, brands, um, uh, entertainment companies, 
people who uh, are into telling stories. I mean, story tech. I mean, the whole th our whole business is bridging the gap between storytellers and technology. So really, it's about who tells stories, brands and storytellers, showrunners, um, uh, and web series creators. I mean, it's the perfect, uh, perfect opportunity. And and so the conference is a half day conference. It's from nine a.m. to noon, and the tours themselves are two hours long. So it's not going to eat up a lot of your time, but it's going to give you the basis for you to go and then explore further. It'll give you good kind of tent poles to uh, structure your, the rest of your experience around. Wow, that's a pretty good service given and, how big that show when, is. <laughs> when you do these tours, you have how many people in the tour, and are they wearing headsets? Because I know... You know, I've done tours on the on the floor, and and ones that don't have headsets are oh, it's so hard to hear. There's so much noise. Yeah. So exactly. So it's it's usually a group of about ten, um, plus or minus, you know, two, and uh, it is we do use headsets uh, for that exact reason. It's just way too loud. You wouldn't hear half of the gems that come out of it if you weren't on on headsets. So the groups are kept small. And um, and uh, so everybody can stay together in here and have the same experience. Do you um, give them a big? You have a big flag and say we're walking, we're walking, and then have like yeah. the vests. And the people at the, people on the tour have to have vests on, right? No, so no vests. <laughs> I was at I was at, I was at the volcano in Hawaii, and there was this busload of people who had these yellow vests on. They could be they could be spotted a mile away. Are so. they afraid they're going to get lost in the volcano? Yeah, exactly. None of them spoke <laughs> English, so like the tour guide had to keep track of everybody. It was hysterical. So, uh, but uh, so on that note, we've got some news and. Uh, Joining us to uh, deliver some of that news, starting with our breaking story, is uh, Jason Perrier, our producer, who's calling in from Canada. And in Canada, they have really, really lousy internet. So Jason sometimes disappears. But he's, uh, he's back. So while we uh, got him. the letters, Lon. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we got, Jason? We got a breaking story from somebody we know, right? Yes. Uh, white Collar Brawler was picked up by Esquire Channel. And Tim, would you like to share what White Collar Brawler is? Yeah, absolutely. So one of our, our friends, one of our pals, uh, Kai Hassan, who has been a guest on the show, um, he works at Portal A, he started out doing a web series called White Collar Brawler, and White Collar Brawler was him and a buddy of his, and they were working in cubicles during the day, but at night they would do boxing. And they converted the show, uh, this web series, where they would... Uh, you know, train to beat the crap out of each other, and uh, and then eventually they had a live event that they sold tickets to and monetized, and somebody came along and optioned the idea of that web series, and now it's a TV show. So Kai's going to be making a uh, you know creator credit or co-creator credit and get paid you know some stipend for uh, creating the show, and it'll be on Esquire. So it's pretty exciting to uh, have another web series going to TV and seeing a web series creator making some money uh, in doing it. Yeah, I would do it if I didn't have to get hit in the head. Yeah. I, have, I tried boxing once. Um, Amber, have you ever tried boxing? No, thank you. Yeah, That'd it's be just... a big comedy thing, right? For raising money? It, it would yeah, be right, funny but... to... Wa yeah, that could be, you know, I don't know. I... You could you could sell tour tickets at CES. <laughs> the CES boxing tour. Boxing tour. <laughs> we'll give you a punch in the head on the way out. You know, I tried boxing with my brother once, and I, I it was the, the one shot to the head was enough for me. I said, you know what, my uh, my brains are too important here. So, um, but we do have some charts to look at this week too. So, you know, Tim, we we look uh, and Amber J. We do this every week. We try to find like the gems of, on YouTube, and we used to do like the YouTube charts, like what's the most viral thing or whatever, and. Um, Tube Filter has this great, uh, this great thing where they look every week at all of the top uh, YouTube channels. And what I decided to do this week, because it rarely changes, uh, is to look at the top five non-affiliated channels that don't have networks attached to them. Because, right? Because there's so much out there that has all these, these multi-channel networks going. And I think there's some examples of people who've actually uh, been able to do pretty well on their own. So uh, here is uh, a few of the more interesting ones. Number five, and this is not even a... a the original content thing. This is more like a America's Funniest Videos kind of arrangement here. Uh, but number five is Fail Army, and they um, they had quite a, a good uh, run this week. Uh, 
uh, several million views this week. I've, unfortunately, I didn't actually write down the number <laughs> for everything else, but, uh, but they just go out and grab videos, apparently from other people, of, of horrible fails. So cars flipping over, people jumping off of roofs into pools and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it's kind of a train wreck and people, people like that. So uh, number four was the MBA, which, uh, you know, is to be expected. A lot of uh, highlights. And I think, Amber, that's probably a great example of a brand using so much value that they have in the content that they own, right? They just put some highlights up and... Uh, and collect some, a couple million views in advertising revenue with that, right? Absolutely. They've, they've actually been looking to expand their online presence uh, and building out a network, a, a whole... I mean, they are... Sports are really taking this um, platform on and, and expanding their brands. And they should, right? Because they own the content. They, re, they remind 100%. us when we're watching live, like, retransmission will send you to jail. So now they can... They can monetize some of that extra stuff. Yeah, but that was always the concern, right? That you couldn't rebroadcast sports because once it was done, it was done. You know, that was the issue with live. But as you see, I mean, even Comedy Gives Back is a perfect example of that. It's live, and then you're taking the chunk of it that you can then repurpose and remonetize. So, uh, I mean, they're really leveraging the content what you thought was just a um, a one-time thing, and ESPN2, classic games, you know, there's there's tons of opportunity for that content. I, Especially I with the, the thing with live is, is that, you know, live is about information, and once that information is done, it's done, but if the content has emotional value to it, then it has replay value. And a lot of times sports, you know, especially where there's some kind of spectacle, where there's some super catch or something like that, that, that has great emotional value, not just the spectacle. And one thing that has come in, this is, I'm going to go, I'm going to skip three because three and one are related. Um, number uh, two, or number, th- yeah, number two is uh, Riot Games. They're, they make this game called League of Legends. As we know, gaming is huge on YouTube, and uh, these guys own this League of Legends multiplayer uh, online game. Uh, look at this one, 22 million views for their wow. cinematic trailer of something. Uh, this week alone, they, um, they collected uh, 19 million views and 80,000 subscribers. So they have a huge base of people that are paying them 15 bucks a month or whatever for the game, and they're all wow. watching the stuff on YouTube, but they're not monetizing it. How about that? So they are, they're just putting this video out for free and not collecting any money on it. Hey, if you had that many people paying you $15, you, you know... Yeah, you, you think about some it. videos too, right? <laughs> Why not, right? Um, and it's uh, it's amazing. That that's been amazing, just the whole gaming thing, just because people spend so much time watching. And actually, what's been interesting about I watched some of the videos on there. They they they're more instructional too. They have some you know entertaining kind of things, but mostly you know, how to get the most out of the game with some really uh, some of the top players there. So. Um, it's amazing. You could start a business in one of these things and make a lot of fake money, or you could really start a business and make a lot of real money, but um, that goes without saying. Uh, number three and one, I'm putting these two together because uh, we've talked about this one before, which is the, uh, uh, the Disney Collector. And the Disney Collector, she just, um, we, we've done this before, but she uh, basically takes uh, Disney toys, buys them at the store, opens up the package, and just kind of shows what's in the package. So. Um, she sticks to Disney, so just like Lou Mangello sticks to Disney World, she sticks to Disney Toys, and this is all it is. It's just like her, um, you know, you don't even see her, and you hear, she does a little voiceover, and she puts the toys together and that kind of thing. So that is uh, number one on our list. She had uh, 31 million views, but there's this other guy called Blue Collection, and he's doing the same thing, just with other stuff. So he's, uh, he's doing the Angry Birds. What's funny is both he and her both reviewed this Angry Birds toy this week, so... Um, and he has, is not as successful as her yet, but he's got 12 million views this week of uh, his, his toy Amazing. reviews. So, I mean, it's just incredible. And apparently little kids are watching this stuff because they want to see what's in the, the box before they spend their allowance on something. So, so between them, 40 million views on these toys this week. Amazing. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So... That is wild. So, Jason, uh, we have something that happened with Breaking Bad this week, a little controversy. I think we lost Jason. Oh, we again. lost him to, to, to those yep, Canadians. Uh, Canadian. They did it again. By the way, if you have questions for Amber J as we're going through the show, you can uh, ask on our uh, channel here. And we have a couple questions, none of them relevant yet. Um, one, uh, Julie Dubois wants to know if we feel good. I, I feel good. Tim? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Amber, how are you feeling? I feel awesome. Great. So I hope you answered your question, Julie. Thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> somebody from uh, uh, somewhere in the Middle East asked how to install Windows 8.1. We can't help you there. Um, there's another show for that. 
Uh, and uh, there is, uh, oh, Alistair Jeffs, uh, you know, we need to work on the backstage chat again. He's asking if there's any way we can do the backstage chat. Um, we think this question thing might be the way to do it, but it har it's hard for people to interact with each other. We're hoping Google will give us some more options on that. But if you go to our um, Behind the Video uh, community and you click on the event, we have a little chat in there so you can uh, follow up with us on that as we go. So uh, that's that. Now, with Breaking Bad, so what happened there was, uh, you know, we had those people put in the obituary in the paper, the local paper, uh, for uh, Walter White, who was the the uh, fictional star of that show, and uh, a local community Please don't group. tell me the ending. I'm only on season three. Okay, well, okay, I won't. <laughs> I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do this without giving away anything. Um, <laughs> um, th so somebody in the show, well, there's a lot of people die in the show, okay? So somebody in the show is going to die. <laughs> Uh, somebody in the show is going to die at, the, at, at, at some point along the way. And uh, when that happens, there will be um, a group in Albuquerque that wanted to raise some money. And they took an obituary that some fans put in the paper to the next level and actually held a funeral. <laughs> and it's kind of backfiring on them in a couple of ways. Uh, one, and probably the most obvious, is that when Sony caught wind of this thing, they shut it down because they were concerned that this might impede their copyright because they were going to YouTube, they were live streaming this on YouTube and they were having like a whole funeral and everything else. And uh, here it is, they, they actually bought, um, I kid you not, they bought a grave plot, like they bought one and put a little fake urn in there and people are burying this character that died in the nice. show. Isn't nice. that awesome? Uh, complete with the headstone, the whole, the whole nine yards. So. YouTube shut them down, and then, and this is, here's the legit gripe beyond the copyright issue. Uh, people who are buried at this cemetery have families who are really ticked off that this is going to become like this tourist thing, that people are going to come to the cemetery, you know, which is really for honoring yeah. the people that have really died, uh, and will start to destroy the place, or at least uh, make it more difficult for them to grieve privately. And I think that's probably a legitimate thing. So... It's the law of unintended consequences. <laughs> That's right. So, um, so, so Amber Jay, hopefully I didn't give anything there, away there. There, so. are, there are a lot of things that are spawning. Um, the Los Angeles County, uh, or Los Angeles County High School for the Arts, LOXA, uh, they did a 64-hour film festival last week, and uh, the students have 64 hours to find out what their genre is, and a line of dialogue, a prop, different things like that, and they have to use all those elements and make a film from start to finish in 64 hours. And one of the genres assigned was sequel to Breaking Bad. Oh, really? And so, yeah, they did a great job. Really, That's really cool. talented kids there. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to Better Call Saul, which will be the, uh, the, the, the spin-off show there. So... Um, and some other news, just really briefly, um, Awesomeness is going to relaunch a, uh, uh, 17 YouTube channels. And these are targeted to uh, teens. Uh, Amber J, that's probably a good thing to do on YouTube, right? Teen programming? Girl, teens, fashion, and makeup, hello. That's it, right? That's where it's at? All time. And it's that whole haul thing, right? You go shopping and you show people what you bought and you, you, can, you just collect the views and go out and buy more stuff with the revenue, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. All right, quickly though, we're gonna to go to movies because we're running out of time. Uh, wow, I'll tell you what a the, the whole Hollywood must be in like total disarray right now because uh, uh, the movies that should have done well are not. So, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is still there after weeks. Ninety-two point seven million dollar cum overall, nine million dollars this weekend. Uh, Escape Plan, nine and a half million dollars on its first week. Carrie, which is like the big Halloween movie of the year, um, number three, fifteen and a half million dollars. Uh, Captain Phillips is not able to break out of number two at 15.7 million, and Gravity is on again in the number one spot after three weeks. Did anyone expect this movie to do this well? No, I don't think so. So it's well, you great. have two, you have two huge heavy hitters, and um, this is. I have to tell you, everybody is who are super critical movie watchers. <laughs> Love this movie. And as far as I can tell, it's a lot of breathing, and it looks totally claustrophobic. <laughs> I have not <laughs> gone and seen it yet, and it looks terrifying to me. Did I'm really looking it? forward to seeing it. I haven't seen it yet, but I am really looking forward. I, I'm, you, uh, 
I'm a huge space geek, and Tim has heard me talk about this a million times, but um, for some of the local uh, content that I do here in Connecticut, I, we got press passes to go cover NASA, and we, we got a tour inside Space Shuttle Discovery, and it is Got tiny. It. it is awesome, by the way, but it is tiny as hell, and there's seven people crammed into this thing. So claustrophobia is like, that's the nature of the business, and uh, it's, it's, um, it's pretty crazy. And, and even like this... Talk- Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I went and saw the WikiLinks movie on Friday. Oh, and how was that? Because now that's been really disappointing. That was like number seven on the top ten this week, so it didn't do as well, well as they thought. What would you think? I have to tell you, I, I thought it was it's fascinating. I mean, like, I like documentaries, and from, like, that perspective, I thought it was fascinating to kind of know how it all came about and how small it was, really, yeah. um, and how they were able to project such a big kind of vision and and how a human's ego can corrupt an entire, uh, but it's that ego that pushed you there. The only thing, and it was very exciting, jetting all around the world and all of this coming together, Um, but I I have to say, it probably went on 20 minutes too long, because I I got bored at the end. And Mm. I think that's what's, um, A, maybe America does, it's, it's like a spy thriller is how it's, is the movie and 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 I don't know if America does America get WikiLinks like the I don't it, think so. Know, yeah, I don't yeah. I don't know if they do. I think it's I, more I, of our community. I think you're right. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is that I've been I've been covering some of this uh, NSA stuff for our local uh, thing here, and you know it doesn't get it doesn't get the readership that an iPhone would get. You know what I mean? Like it's just not like people just assume this is all happening and just don't care and it's kind of disappointing <laughs> actually. Yeah. But. Yeah, when it when it comes to politics, people um have been conditioned not to care, not to pay attention, to think that that they don't matter. And that's been good for the people that control things cuz uh they don't have the general public getting in their way. That is very true. And um, moving on, along those lines, before we close out, and I want to make sure we don't take too much time here, uh, Netflix is coming after your cable box. Apparently, Netflix is in the running to uh, get on cable systems. And I think there might be some, some good synergies there, mainly because if, if Netflix can provide its services to cable companies in a less expensive way than every channel does to them, because they get beat up by having to pay for uh, per subscriber fees on top of uh, providing all the infrastructure for these channels. That might be a way to go. And a follow-up question that Alistar is asking in our chat room here is any significance of Netflix commissioning Sony to make a show for them? So, you know, they're really becoming like an HBO, right? They're going after big studio houses and they're, um, and they're trying to get on your cable box. Tim, what's, uh, what, what do you think is happening here? Well, they have to take a look at the whole market and see what are different ways that they can monetize. They did have a fight with Hollywood in the recent years where they kind of got cut off from programming. So they've created their own with like House of Cards and other things that that they've done. And they have to look at every revenue stream out there. Um, And I think Hulu is is following suit and they're going to do the same thing. So Netflix is really a leader in this community. And I, I think there's somebody to pay attention to on a lot of levels, uh, it, it seems like uh, you know their their stiffest competition is HBO Go. If HBO Go makes it so that you don't need a cable subscription, um, that's going to be huge. But if Netflix does get uh, MSO or um, I always want to say MSOs, but but it's uh, MVPDs is the new phrase now. Um, if they get them on board. Uh, it's it's really going to be competition for HBO Go. I mean, I, I think for a lot of people, if it wasn't for live events, uh, they wouldn't have cable at all. They'd get mm-hmm. everything that they want off the Internet. Right. I've been watching, by the way, the newsroom, Tim. Oh, it's yeah, great. Love the newsroom. Love it. I just started watching it. I had HBO Go for a while. I haven't even used it yet until this, this past uh, it's week. It's great. So. Loving it. Loving cool. every minute of it. It's fantastic. So, Well, I don't want to um, make the show go on for too long, so we're going to wrap up with our uh, tip of the week. And, I, and this is a, uh, usually I do like a gadget tip. This, this time it's going to be something different. And, um, and this is a, a, a little plug, too, at the same time. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. Um, we have, have two uh, laptops. Uh, yes, yeah. have two laptops and a phone and too much crap to push buttons for. It's amazing I can even think after I do this show. Um, but uh, in Connecticut, we have uh, this little, actually starting to become a big thing. It's called Reset, which is a social enterprise trust. And 
Uh, this past week, uh, we were just awarded a grant from this group for some of the local content that we're doing. We've been helping out uh, local journalists who've lost their jobs, launched their own publications, and uh, we're, we've uh, we applied for a contest that they were running and, and got a grant to uh, help continue that mission, which has been great. And uh, this is something that uh, is probably out in just about every state both here in the United States and probably other cities across the world, that there's a lot of groups that are looking um, for social enterprises, things just like what Amber J is doing to um, you know, build a business around a charity event or around helping people or doing something that has, of course, a, a motive to make money, but also a motive to bring about some positive changes. And there's a lot of people willing to help you in those, in those missions because uh, venture capital is often few and far between in some of these kinds of efforts because uh, there isn't a $100 billion potential with it to, to you know, make a good return on it. So uh, just a note to like, go out and look for some of these things. Uh, get involved with the community in your area and see what might be there to, to help you along the way. Is that, I mean, is that something you've seen out there, Amber, like a, a movement in the social enterprise front? Because I've, I've been hearing more and more about it lately. Well, I love to hear that there are contests because we would love to be a part of those. <laughs> but um, social benefit enterprise is a huge movement. It's very, uh, it's a, it's a very millennial way of thinking of doing business, where you can build a profitable business. I mean, it's really shifting that whole mentality of nonprofit to profit for good, profit that is. Um, improving the planet in one way, shape, or form, and they um, institutionalize this with the B Corp, which is a benefit corporation, right. and that's a big movement that um, these type of enterprises, we're in the process of becoming a B Corp, and um, it's, a, it's a very big movement out here in LA uh, to have companies that are for-profit but that are doing good. And at the core of the company, that is their mission. I think there's going to be some work to be done, too, because while you can register federally for a B Corp, in Connecticut, you cannot. So it's, there's like a little bit of a dichotomy there that they're going to have to work out. Is there, is there special tax rates for B Corps? You know, um, I don't know if that's in place quite yet, but the, the idea, he, I think it's a mind shift for people to think that, uh, you know, charity for us has been, oh, you have to struggle. Charities aren't um, flush with cash or they're not, you know, you have to struggle. And I think this is a, a mind shift of abundance and that you, it, everything can flow and it can be abundant and prosperous um, while doing good. And, and so what for me, what B Corp does is it validates that, yes, this is a company that's for profit, but it actually has been vetted and that it is a company that is using its resources and or its core or its mission is improving whatever kind of vertical it, its mission is. Hmm. Um, and, and so I think that the, the tax breaks are coming and I, and I'm sure there are there are it depends on kind of what industry you're in as to what that means right well that's something exciting for people to keep in mind especially if they have a, a social benefit mind minded uh, idea that uh, this might be something to really get into the round floor on so um, and good luck with uh, with what you're doing uh, amber where can people find you and everything you're doing uh, well, follow me on Twitter, Amber J. Lawson on Twitter, and uh, also um, Comedy Gives Back, November 6th. Tune in at 7 a.m. Pacific Time on Daily Motion, and um, see us at CES for StoryTech, the conference, Impact. All right, got a lot going on. You're gonna, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna need a vacation after all this is over with. So. I really am. <laughs> I'm gonna be in yeah. Miami for nappy. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. Tim, where can so people if, find? Oh, sorry, if go ahead, you, um, if you do, if anybody out there, if you see on Twitter, Comedy Gives Back anything, retweet it. Just help out with a retweet. It doesn't cost Thank you anything. Thank you very much. Definitely do that and tune in. Tim, where can people find you? At one Tim Street on Twitter or .com, either place. That is the gateway to Tim and his beard. So you can... Uh, <laughs> You let people, I, I, if my daughter ever meets you, Tim, she's going to want to grab that, that beard. So Yeah, you better keep her away from me. 
<laughs> and you can find me at lonsiben.com, L-O-N-S-E-I-D-M-A-N, and that's also the same spelling on my Twitter account. And we are at behindthevideo.com. That links you to our Google Plus community. And if you sign up there, you'll get notified whenever there's a new show. And you can tune in live there. You can find us on uh, YouTube and on Stitcher and on iTunes. So if you want to take us in your car, you can do that as well. Just keep your Subscribe. eyes on the Subscribe. And subscribe. Just, just hit that button everywhere you see it because we need to uh, continue building our audience. We work hard to provide this service for you. We, we, need, we need to have more eyeballs on it. So that will do it for this edition of Behind the Video. We are a wrap. Stories for this episode were compiled by producer Jason Perrier. Follow him on Twitter at J-A-S-O-N-P-E-R-R-I-E-R. Behind the Video is a production of Ape Digital Incorporated and the Independent Media Network, LLC. All rights reserved.